dollars plus some tax incentives. What in the end, when all these deals are completed, what the amount do you think will be flowing to the sector? So I've said that I'm not going to talk about uh, I'm not going to talk about specific dollar amounts because there are ongoing negotiations. But the panel made it clear that uh, you know that there needed to be different revenue sources. We are going to uh, we're going to work to put those in place. Um, the uh, uh, the reality is that the industry is going to be smaller than it was, and we've said that all along. We said that a, a sustainable horse racing industry is going to be a smaller industry, and uh, that's that's a reality that uh, I know that the industry is is confronting, and we're going to work we're going to work through this transition with them. Premier, the government has called the, called the 346 a subsidy. Whatever number you end up in the end, is it still a subsidy to the horse racing? Industry? You know what? It, it, I think there was there was a an arrangement in place. That arrangement is changing. The industry is evolving, and we are going to work with them. Uh, I don't think I don't think labeling or um, or or uh, parsing the uh, the semantics around particular words is going to be helpful at this juncture. I think what we need to do now is we need to say, okay. What is in the best interest of the industry? How do we make sure we protect the animals? How do we make sure that we protect jobs? And how do we make sure that we have a, a viable industry for the people who want to take part in that industry, who want to enjoy it? So it's about the jobs. It's about tourism. It's about the, uh, the vibrant uh, industry that has been in this province evolving to a place where it can be uh, it can be sustainable and we know as government we've got a role to play in that premier when can you say used to uh, used to well has uh, slot machines in racetracks in compensation the racetracks industry was receiving 345 million dollars now OLG is going to be renting space how much is that rent going to cost so the financial model is changing Okay, and and no matter how many ways you come at the numbers, I'm not I'm not going to be talking about exactly what the number is in terms of the transition. You're you're talking about the rent, and I don't know if anybody's got those rent numbers, John or John or Elmer. Um, not complete. Right. So those those rent, um, I think the rent agreements have all been finalized with the 14 tracks, but we we don't have the exact numbers. So there are 14 rent agreements in place with uh, with each of the tracks, but. Um, the uh, the transition agreements aren't all in place, so I don't I don't know the I don't have those uh, those numbers, and it doesn't sound like we have a, a total number. But the, the rent agreements, uh, the slot rent agreements are in place, and we're working on the uh, the transition agreements. And I'll be posted, I'll be to the, the 345. I I, I, be more or less? I can't I can't. I can't. Uh, I your previously, you know, the, the the argument of the previous government was that. Uh, this money should be would be better spent on education and health care. Why should uh, government coffers, because this is lottery money, this is government control money, uh, be putting anything into an industry like horse racing? Why shouldn't it be being spent on education and, and health care? So I'm going to I'm going to make a I'm going to make a comment and then I'm going to ask members of the panel to weigh in on this. But my contention is that uh, there's room in Ontario for horse racing. And healthcare and education. We, you know, I don't, I don't think that we need to, uh, that we need to make those choices entirely. The reality is that the, uh, the amount of money that was, uh, that was part of that agreement is going to change. It is changing, and so we, you know, we've been clear about that. Having said that, we need a horse racing industry, and we need obviously strong health care and education. Those Why are those are huge priorities. So I'm going to ask I'm going to ask my panel members. <clears throat> John, great. yeah, that's a great question, Mike. I think if you remember when the final report was uh, <laughs> when the when the final report was released, uh, the work of Elmer and John and I, we said what is in the public interest versus what was going on going forward. Our advice, our consensus advice, is that any new arrangement had to be accountable, had to be transparent, that the industry had to be focused on the customer, and that the and that any money from the government going to the industry would be returned plus more by way of taxes, because this industry generates HST and income taxes back to the government. So we said that's the way that you look at it from a good public policy. That was not the case under the old system, which is why we agreed that it needed to be reformed, but it's exactly why under this new arrangement, you will have a relationship between the government and the industry which is accountable, which is transparent, which is based not on slot machines but on the customer for the horse racing industry 
and as well that it'll provide for Minister Souza a positive rate of return, and that's what's good for taxpayers. What's a positive rate of return? Anything above zero. Yeah. A plus is better than a negative. <laughs> it was negative, the line. it will be positive. But what is it going to be this time? Well, as, as the Premier said, you know, last time I, uh, uh, my background is in business. One does not uh, negotiate with the industry, uh, with all of you people in the room, uh, discussing the amounts. Uh, the best thing is that we have agreements in principle for uh, the 14 tracks. We, uh, when it comes to uh, them being able to rent their facilities to OLG, beyond that, we now have. Uh, six of the 14 tracks have indicated a willingness to be part of this new model. Uh, those six tracks represent some 80% of all the wagering that happened last year in the province of Ontario. So this is a very positive uh, development and there's more work to be done. Premier Wynne. Madame la Première Ministre, je pense que Dwight Duncan parlait de 9 millions d'heures de soins à domicile, 28 000 arthroplasties qui pouvaient être euh, faites grâce à ces 345 millions de dollars. Qu'est-ce qui est le plus important pour le gouvernement? Pour moi, c'est important que l'industrie euh, euh, peut avoir un avenir parce qu'il y a des emplois, plus de, de jobs et euh, pour l'économie de l'Ontario rural, c'est un, un très imp, un, un industrie très important. Et nous avons aussi besoin, c'est clair, d'un système de, de santé qui est, qui est euh, très fort et d'éducation, mais euh, il y a place pour euh, une, une industrie euh, horse racing <laughs> et aussi euh, pour l'éducation et euh, la santé. Premier Wynn, the uh, slots are going to shut down at Flamborough Downs on April 1st. Are negotiations going on with them and how are they going? There are negotiations going on with uh, with all of the uh, the tracks and, you know, the the, uh, the owners and the operators will have to make a decision about whether they are willing to, uh, to be part of the new model, but that's the conversation that's happening right now. Premier and I was, I was in Flamborough uh, last weekend, and I know that uh, that conversation is ongoing. Premier, you're, you're liberal. Go ahead. Sorry, didn't you just say that all the, the slot agreements have been... The slot agreements have been finalized, but the transition agreements have not been finalized. They're only with the six tracks. Can, can, can you at least put a ceiling on the amount of money, of taxpayer money, that you're willing to pump into this industry? You know what? This, uh, John, John can take that. John can take that. But uh, you know, the the reality is that we are in conversation with the uh, with the tracks. We're talking about transition money. What we're saying is that th we understand that there needs to be a transition period in order for the industry to adjust to a new model. And I think that's what the that's what the sober second thought. That's what the transition panel allowed us to do was to have an opportunity to work with the industry to move it to a different model and you know I think that it will be a more sustainable model over the over the long term. How long you, you said a transition period then does that mean that this is going to some of these agreements are two years seven, these are three, three year years. these are three year agreements that have been uh, negotiated and then after that tracks. would we be back to negotiating rent space or are we looking to you know what we'll have a conversation <laughs> then okay okay well we know then what the dollar figure is for today's stuff Premier, you yeah, can understand just, why we we're just, obsessed with the money on that. You know that I, it's no, all I, about that. I understand. I understand. I also understand that I want the uh, I want the negotiations to be able to proceed in, in good faith, and so we're not going to talk about uh, dollar amounts at this point. Would John, you, do you want to add something? Yeah, uh, thank you, Premier. Um, so, to be clear, in our report, uh, uh, we recommended to the government a couple of things. One is that uh, the government needed to do negotiation. Uh, a full open book discussion with the tracks. I think the, the tracks present here today will tell you that was a very robust conversation. Um, I think that's how they would describe it. Uh, so that we could get a better, uh, a better description, a better handle on the costs in this industry. Frankly, uh, six months or eight months ago, there really wasn't a, a good basis of data on which to build a good and prosperous industry in Ontario, and we're, we're putting together those numbers now. We also recommend to the government that uh, no, none of the financial recommendations that we made be made public until those negotiations were complete for obvious reasons that that aggregate number would prejudice those conversations. Uh, they're ongoing now. Uh, you mentioned Flamborough with the Great Canadian Gaming folks. We met with them uh, as early as a few days ago. So that conversation's ongoing. 
and uh, in, to release the aggregate numbers in advance of the successful completion of all of those agreements, I think would prejudice the taxpayers and the government of Ontario. So that was our recommendation. The government's following through. On but it. I, I and I just want to I just want to say thank you, John. Um, I just want to say that I am confident that we are going to be able to complete those negotiations. Last question. Are there two? Uh, uh, Premier, yes. the breeding side of the industry has consistently felt they've slipped through the cracks, and when they hear the details of this, I don't think they're going to feel any different. What do you say to that component of the horse industry? Well, what I would say is that um, I understand from the, the breeding side that they want, they want stability, they want to know what is coming, because their, their work is future work, right? So uh, what I would say to them is that we are we're committed to a sustainable industry, not just today, but into the future. I mean, what, what John Snowblin just said about, uh, you know, really looking at what the costs are, understanding how the industry works and, and how it, uh, how it can, how it can uh, sustain itself into the future. That's what this exercise has been about. So, you know, I would want to say to the breeders that uh, I hope that they take some comfort from the fact today that I've said that we are, you know, we're reaching agreement with TRACS. TRACS are seeing that, uh, that they're going to be able to move into a new model and I hope that that will take, um, you know, numbers of them into the, the long term, which should be good news for breeders. Yeah, so Kathleen, 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 you were at a dinner last night uh, and you probably have heard about the controversy with Sarah Thompson saying that the mayor uh, inappropriately grabbed her derriere. Uh, I don't know if there's an appropriate way to do that, but anyway. Uh, that's the allegation from her. Uh, did you hear anything? You were at the dinner last night. Did you hear any such thing? I was at the uh, CJ Pack reception. Uh, I had left before um, before Mayor Ford arrived. Um, I did see Sarah Thompson there, but uh, as I say, it was uh, it was before Mayor Ford Pre arrived. So I knew nothing question. about it. Premier will be O L G now be administering. You talk about merging horse racing into the provincial strategy. The provincial gaming strategy is the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corporation. Will OLG now be administering horse racing in Ontario? So I, I, yeah, I would like to see the integration of the uh, of the two of the policy, yeah. And um, I don't know whether is Elmer still here? Did he? No, Elmer's gone. I don't know if John or John want to comment on their recommendation because it was uh, it was their recommendation we're acting on. Yeah, Keith. What we found is that you can see in other jurisdictions around the world that where there's an integration of gaming policy and horse racing, that you have a number of. Um, very sustainable models. There are many of them. There's things like the V75 and the PMU in Europe. Uh, there's uh, sports betting, there's racinos around the world. And where we see that there's a good relationship, a symbiotic relationship between gaming and horse racing, you have a sustainable, vibrant horse racing industry. We could not find any other jurisdiction that didn't have that relationship that had a sustainable horse racing industry, which is why we heard loud and clear from the industry it was important that that be integrated from a policy point of view, and we're just delighted uh, that the Premier has decided that that's a recommendation that's key to be able to have a future for the industry, because that's what they're waiting to hear, is there a future, and that is a that is a, actually, a, a, I would say, an extremely important uh, aspect for the, those people who are in the industry to see that there is a future uh, that is going to be sustainable based on best practices around the world. Those practices uh, governments around the world think are beneficial for taxpayers. Would we even be here today if the government wasn't so ham-fisted last year at slamming the industry to begin with? We said we needed a, a second look at this issue, and so we took it. And that's why, uh, you know, that's why Minister McMeekin set up the panel. I'm very grateful to them for their work, and I'm very pleased that uh, that we've gotten to today. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Wind Power Project. What message do you have for the people of North Perth? So I have. Uh, I've been clear that we need to. Uh, we need to insert more uh, local autonomy into the the processes around the green energy uh, siting and, uh, and uh, projects and so the Minister of Energy is working on that as we speak and uh, you know it, it's very important to me that we continue to produce green renewable power but I also know that uh, more, more community input and more community buy-in is necessary. We need that willing host component and that's what the Minister of Energy is working on. Premier, Premier your press release 